It's a sometimes thankless job, but he's done it with flair and effectiveness. Brad Ross spent the past decade heading communications for the Toronto Transit Commission. He's getting off at a new stop in 2019. And before he does, we're happy to get one final service update, this time on being the public voice of North America's third busiest transit system. Brad, it's good to have you in that chair. Thank you. And I guess for people who live outside Toronto, we should point out that you're the guy we hear on the PA all the time saying, here's what's going on on your system right now. Well, you hear me on the radio and the TV, and you hear yeah. me on Twitter. The PA, we have a robot now who does that work yeah, for us. Yeah, back in the day, I guess yes. that was part of it too. How'd you end up with the TDC in the first place? You know, it, 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 uh, it was a long journey, as they say. I started at the City of Toronto um, in 2000. Um, before that, I, I had other, other roles in the public service. But really, it started at, at the City in 2000, doing communications for the City. Uh, and in 2008, this job came available at the TTC as the Director of Communications, Corporate Communications. Uh, I applied. I was successful. And, and, uh, and here I am 10 years later. You made a bit of a kind of a funny name for yourself because you had a... You, you had a sense of humor about the way you went about your job when it was required. And one of the times when it was required, again, for people who live outside the city, down at Queen's Key, there's, there, are sub, there are streetcar tracks that people often drove along and then drove into the tunnel, mm -hmm. despite lots of signs around saying, don't drive on these tracks, you're going to go into a tunnel. Yep. And here's what you tweeted. Um, this is from July when you were starting to install gates on Queen's Key so people would stop driving their cars into the streetcar tunnel, you said, no more 4 a.m. calls that go, hey, Brad, another car in the Queen's Key tunnel. Have you really been taking calls at 4 a.m. from the brass <laughs> for 10 years? You know, it would depend on the on what was happening. There was some a lot of bad news that I would get calls about, unfortunately, but also just alerts. You know, we went through a spate of a number of cars literally driving down into that tunnel. And, and the thing is, Steve, the tracks are raised. When, once you get to the bottom of that tunnel, they're raised tracks. They're about this far off the ground. And people made it all the way down to Union <laughs> Station onto the platform, yeah. amazingly enough. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, at that point, I think, my, I think I had reached my, my point where, you know, I kind of made a decision. I said, enough is enough. We're putting these gates in. Um, I knew, you know, the, the CEO of the, uh, at the time was, was, you know, concurred that we had to do this eventually. And so I just sort of put it out there. Three weeks after you started, what happened? So three weeks after we started, I went on, we went on strike. I, um, I joined the TTC on March the 31st. Negotiations, you know, the, the contract expired that day, in fact. Negotiations had been ongoing. They were ongoing uh, into April uh, at a hotel just north of the city in Richmond Hill. You got thrown right into the frying pan and, and into the fire. Yeah, we had an agreement with the, with the union executive on that Sunday. By that Friday, it wasn't ratified, and by about 6 o'clock that night, we started to get a sense that it was not going to go well. Yeah. I remember very distinctly uh, speaking to Gary Webster, who was the chief general manager at the time. Uh, he was about to board a GO train going home to, to Pickering uh, down at Union Station, and I said, Gary, I, I, I think we're going to have a problem. So we got back <laughs> on the subway, uh, back up to Davisville, uh, and it was one of those weekends that just didn't seem to ever end. <laughs> Now, again, this is a bit of an indicative of your sense of humor here. Uh, people in, in the capital city of Ontario love to complain about the TTC. As much as they enjoy using it, they love to complain about it as well. And here was one particularly bad morning rush hour, and here's your tweet. This morning's service on line one was abysmal. <laughs> and for that, the TTC sincerely apologizes. Here's what happened. And then here's what you put up. A late clearing work zone overnight track work near Finch Station meant we had to park some work cars in pocket tracks until morning rush hour, trying to run the work cars back to... I'm not going to read the whole thing. Suffice to say, you went through chapter and verse uh, to make sure that everybody knew why things had broken down. Mm -hmm. uh, how much fun was that to do? It, it, no, no fun at all. Mm -hmm. I mean... At the same time, it was really important, and it, had, it, it, it remains very important that in this role, in communications generally, that you are transparent with the public, especially when you're funded by the public. So our customers, our riders, it was a terrible, terrible morning. That was January the 30th of this year. Um, we had a, an incredibly crowded platform at Bloor Southbound. We came uh, this close to, to, to closing the station and evacuating it, in fact. Um, and you know, people were coming at us from all sides, and quite rightly. And so it was, it was necessary to, 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 to let the public know Here's what happened, and so there's that, that like litany. Fifteen things all at once went down. A lot of yeah. bad things happened. Uh, I think it's about 
nine years ago almost that there was a picture of a TTC employee named George Robitaille that was just absolutely viral on social media because, uh, well, he, he fell asleep behind the glass where he was a ticket taker or whatever you... Collector, station collector. collector. There you go, station collector. Uh, that made for a great meme. It did. But what was the story that wasn't told? The story that wasn't told was that George was ill. And, and sadly, George passed away about 11 months after that photo went viral. And nobody felt worse about that picture than George Robitaille himself. That was, in fact, Steve, the, the tipping point, the, the proverbial you know, straw that broke the camel's back with respect to customer service at the TTC. We had, been, we had gone through a series of sort of bad news uh, you know, 25 cent fare increase. Uh, we stopped selling tokens for fear of token hoarding as a result of that fare increase. Um, the strike really started it uh, because that strike in, in 2008 that we just spoke about uh, came as a bit of a surprise to people. It was a legal strike, but there was no warning. It came without warning and people had been stranded downtown. And so the, um, the animus towards the TTC was beginning to grow. Uh, and that, that photo of George um, asleep in the collector booth, it was at McCowan Station, one of, our, one of our most quiet stations on the system. At about midnight, George was ill, and that picture really did take off. And he was hepped up on meds at the time, right? Which yeah, probably was, accounted for why he fell he asleep. He had a heart condition. Yeah. Um, okay, if you're ill, you should probably be at home. But, but nevertheless, that was a, you know, I, that, that's one of those, if I could have a do-over, in terms of communications and issues and dealing with matters at the TTC, that's that's one I would like back because I don't think uh, I don't think the city generally and I don't think frankly the TTC treated George uh, as well as as perhaps we could have. Hmm. The TTC has spent a lot of time and resources trying to get people to a behave better in general on the subway and on the streetcars and buses, and you've talked a lot about harassment as well. How mm -hmm. come? These are things that our customers tell us that, uh, you know, whether it's etiquette or whether it's unwanted, and it's, it, it's sexual harassment, it's also unwanted attention. It's these, you know, these pickup artists, these, these men who, who feel that they have the right on a, on, a, on a subway train or any vehicle, a bus or a streetcar, where they can walk up to a woman and, and say anything they want and, you know, try to engage in a conversation. And the woman is not interested at all. She's just trying to get to wherever she mm -hmm. wants to go. And, and now she's, she's on this vehicle. She's sort of trapped, if you will. Um, and, and so our customers uh, have told us that, you know, do something about this. Help us out with something. Can you tell if you've made progress? Not yet. I think the app that, we're, that, that we, we purchased, it's, uh, it's called Safe TTC. It's, a, it's an application on a smartphone that allows you to alert us to issues that may be happening, whether you're seeing somebody being harassed, for example, or you yourself are, or whatever may be happening. You can let us know anonymously or, or not, as the case may be. It actually gives us good information because maybe this guy is, is doing this every day at the same time on this train, and we can actually then send our special constables to have a word. Got it. Uh, admittedly, the numbers I'm going to read to you here are, uh, I think, a couple of years old now, but CBC did a piece a while ago saying that two-thirds of the TTC delays we're actually caused by customers, talking about ill passengers, talking about disorderly passengers. Are the passengers the one who are causing the TTC to be unreliable, in your view? Um, so I'm going to be really careful about how I answer that question because, you know, it's a combination of things. We certainly do a lot uh, to... to uh, uh, a lot of own goals, as the former CEO Andy Byford uh, used to say. Um, but there are things that, that, that the public do that do cause delays. I mean, there's no getting around that. You know, holding doors, for example, will cause the doors to potentially malfunction, which then causes the train to be delayed. Um, people have pressed the what's now, what's now called the emergency alarm, used to be called uh, the passenger assistance alarm, would press it if they missed a stop, for example, or because they, they wanted to ask a question. And those things hold up service. Um, but people also become ill. That's not the TTC's fault, but it's also not, you know, the passenger's mm -hmm. fault either who becomes ill. So it's a, it's a transit system that is run by people, for people, and so when human beings are involved in these things, there's always going to be something that happens. The courtesy stuff, as you know, we were alluding to, is, is something that drives people crazy. Blocking doors, feet on seats, backpacks, those types of things. Um, you know, all lead to a better or worse transit experience for our riders. We carry 1.8 million people every day on the TTC. It's a lot of people. And at a crowded time at rush hour, we want to make sure that everybody's having a smooth, 
uneventful trip as, mm. as much as possible. This is a very delicate subject, but you guys have changed your policy on this, and so I want to talk about it for a moment here. And that is in the past, uh, well, it, it's, it is a reality of a big city transit system. There are people who are suffering from mental illness, and they jump in front of subway cars uh, in an effort to commit suicide. Uh, for years, the TDC never discussed this, fearing, I guess, that it would create copycat uh, incidents. That's changed during your tenure. How so? It's changed in how, in the language that we use, in acknowledging that that a suicide has in fact occurred. Mm -hmm. You're quite right. There was a, a time when we didn't we didn't say anything. What we said was, in the language we still use in terms of a broadcast to to the millions of people who may be on the system at a given time, is that we have an injured customer at track level. That comes from the robotic voice that we talked about, mm -hmm. or an e alert, or a tweet again from a, a faceless, um, you know, sort of uh, corporate account. Mm -hmm. What, what, what I have done in consultation with uh, the distress centers of Toronto, who we've partnered with on Crisis Link, um, and advice from mental health professionals is to use the word suicide, using it with empathy, using it with compassion, so that when somebody does die by suicide or attempts suicide on the subway, what I say, what I, what I will say publicly in a radio interview, for example, during the morning rush hour, or on Twitter is, tragically, somebody... Uh, has lost her life this afternoon at St. Clair Station. As a result, uh, there are no, uh, there are no uh, subway trains between Bloor and Eglinton, for example. And, and, and by the way, if you or somebody you know uh, is, is in distress or uh, is, is considering suicide, here's some phone numbers that you can reach out to. And so it's a, it, it, it is, as you say, a reality in a big city. But there's something that, that perhaps we can do about it. If we can save one life, if we can make a little bit of a difference, if we can raise awareness uh, around mental health issues and the reality of suicide, uh, the victim, of course, you know, is killed or is very, very seriously injured and their families suffer through that. But there's also the operator. There's also the witnesses on the platform. Mm -hmm. And frankly, there's also the crew the track crew that have to, to deal with the aftermath. So there is, um, there's impacts all around, and, and, and that, has, that has an impact on people. That is post-traumatic stress for, uh, for, for our employees and for witnesses. So it is a very serious issue, and it is one that uh, I think as a society we need to talk about more. And if the TTC, as a public agency that has a, that where, where people very publicly choose to take their lives, if we can help change that, uh, change that, then I think that's, that's something we ought to try. Gotcha. Okay, bit of a hard turn here because um, you're leaving the TTC, you have left the TTC, you're now going to work for the city, uh, which has been in a bit of a state, as you may have noticed. I've heard. I've there heard. are half as many city councillors as there used to be. Mm -hmm. There was a little something that happened over the summer about uh, a bit of a dispute between the province and the city as to how many councillors should be there. Uh, you know, I used the analogy earlier, but there is a bit of an out of the frying pan into the fire aspect to the job you're about to undertake, isn't there? What are you about well, to do? I, 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 so I'm about to go back to the city yeah. uh, as a, it's a new title and it is a chief communications officer for the city of Toronto. So, it, it, you know, I'm a public servant. Uh, we'll continue on the public service side um, and it's sort of wrangling the communications that, that, that the city does to engage with all of the residents uh, in this city. There are things that I think we can do more, uh, that we could try doing, things that I did at the TTC that I'd like to try to, and apply at the city in terms of, you know, engagement, whether it's on social media or whether it's using videos in different ways. Mm -hmm. What can we do a little bit differently? Because, Steve, the, the municipal level of government um, is the one that touches your life probably more than any other. Mm -hmm. You turn on the tap, you flick on a, flick on a light switch, you, um, you, know, you call 911, you go to get a book from the library, you take public transit. Mm -hmm. These are municipal services. These are the ones that every single day when you're out there, you put your garbage out, you expect the snow to be cleared in the winter. These are municipal services. And so are there things that we can do uh, to further engage, because at the same time, you know, elections, uh, election turnout at the municipal level is the lowest mm -hmm. in, in the nation. Um, why is that? Are, there, are people not engaged? Is there something we can do a little bit differently to really drive home all the services, uh, all the programs that the city delivers? I'm going to, in our last 30 seconds, ask you just to open your jacket a little bit 
because I think I finally have figured out why you had to leave the TTC. That tie clip of yours is obsolete now. Those tokens no longer exist, right? Well, they, they still exist until next year. So the Metro Pass becomes obsolete at the end of this okay. year. The token, though, it is on, it is on its uh, it is on in the endangered list because <laughs> on August the 3rd of 2019, we will stop selling the token and we'll stop accepting it at the end of 2019. So, yes, it is, uh, it is, it is near, near, near it's, on its, it's on a death watch. It's going the way of the dodo bird. It is. But it makes for a nice tie clip, I do have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good, uh, you had a good run at the TTC, and good luck Wonderful. with what comes next at uh, City Hall. I appreciate that. Thank you, Steve. That's Brad Ross. Uh, he's now got a new Twitter handle. He's Brad Ross T.O. if you want to follow his latest tweets in his newest incarnation. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Bacon is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.